Parker Four Star Playhouse presents David Niven, Dick Powell, Charles Boyer, Joan Fontaine. I need your help rather desperately. Oh, then this little tete tete has nothing to do with my unlamented absence in Europe for the past two months, or how many paintings I've bought for my clients. In short, it's not about me. No. No, I've, I've met a young artist who does the most interesting work. I'd like you to see it. My friends have kept me informed about this new find of yours, darling. Yes, they would. I hear she's very attractive. She's very talented and vitally in need of encouragement. I also hear she's a threat to your status quo as a bachelor. True? Do we have to go into that? Which means, of course, that she is. All I need from you, Addie, is a good, honest opinion of her work. And, of course, the assurance that she has a great talent and that uh, she ought to remain on here in New York where she can uh, study. How good is her work? Oh, I wouldn't know. That's why I called you. I mean, I'm artistically tone deaf, and you at least are one of the top three art critics in the world. Thank you. Anyway, all I want from you is an honest opinion that Lois's work is magnificent. I want you to be completely frank. Just tell her she's great. So I thought perhaps this evening... Ted, I, uh, I hear she's very young. She's ageless. About 20 ageless, I understand. Well, let's not exaggerate. She's going on 21. You'll love her. I'm sure of it. I didn't think that the arty type appealed to you. Had I known, I'd have reorganized my tactics. <laughs> well, I'll pick you up this evening. Should we say, um, 8 o'clock? Let's not. And as long as this is your day for frank opinions, may I say that I'm tired of playing Cupid for you? I'm turning in my quiver. Well, I'll bring the darts and point out the target. Let's make it 8.15. It's a much better time anyway. No. And that's absolutely final. No. You're so attractive when you're trying to be firm. 8.30? All right? What are you doing? Counting up the number of times we've been through this. There was the Bulgarian ballerina, the tennis player, the runner-up for Miss Iceland, the parachute jumper, and the homegirl. That's five. And now six raises its ugly head. Oh, yes, I know, but all those were sort of uh, warm-ups. Mm -hmm. And all the time you were stalking your prey, I was always along as your gun bearer, aiding and abetting you, friend, advisor, confidant, and darn fool. Oh, you've been wonderful, Eddie. Mm -hmm. The best friend a man ever had. Chiseling on my headstone, friend. Do you really plan to marry this girl? Oh, I do. I do. I can just hear it now. I say, I do, she says, I do, and the preacher says, do you? No, he says, uh, I now pronounce you man and wife. Wait a minute, has she uh, said that she loves you? Come on. She's, um, she's an intense young thing, Addie. She says that she doesn't want to use love as an escape. She talks like a bee picture. Anyway, love isn't an escape, it's a trap. She says she wants to prove herself to herself. Where's this paragon from, cliche Idaho? No, Texas. She can rope. At a pinch, she can brand. Rides like a centaur. What is the feminine of centaur? Cowgirl. Oil family? No, carrots. Her father's a carrot rancher. 11,000 acres, all carrots. I could just picture at the roundup, helping Daddy brand and carrots for the supermarket. Up the old Chisholm Trail with a bushel basket. <laughs> now you're being catty. I know, darling, but there's two things I've never liked. Your girls and carrots. Come on, let's get this thing oh, over with. Don't forget, you've got to like her work, whether you like it or not. This is Miss Bancroft. When Mr. Parker telephoned you were coming, I, I nearly fainted. Imagine the famous Adele Bancroft judging my work. Oh, she's been just champing at the bit to get here, haven't you, Addie? Uh, yes. Well, well, come on in. Do sit down. Isn't Mr. Parker the most amazing man? Yes, Mr. Parker certainly is the most amazing man. 
Well, make yourselves comfortable. I'll, I'll fix you a drink. Well, I must say, she's the most charming child. Oh, me. Another tennis player. She got you playing, too? Oh, heaven forbid. She is rather given to outdoor sports, but I think I'd be able to cure her. I doubt that. The young have so much energy. I should say offhand that your married life would include many long hikes, mountain climbing, and, uh... Oh, yes. Sunrise swims. Oh, please, Annie. I forgot. Love is ageless. Now, you've got to tell her her work's good. You forgot to tell me what all this desperate urgency is about. Well, it's some ridiculous event, Father. Either she establishes herself as a professional artist within six months, or she goes home. You know, sometimes it takes longer than six months. Oh. Well, her six months is up on Friday, and the father arrives on Thursday. He sounds like a resolute fellow. You know, you could always follow her to Texas. Matter of fact, you'd uh, look very attractive on a horse. Roping carrots. Addie, you know how I feel about horses. I loathe them, and the feeling is mutual. Even lady horses? Please don't be technical. Anyway, her objective is to become an artist. Until then, she can't think seriously about any man. But that's a very fresh outlook. A luxury that only attractive 21-year-olds can afford. Shh. I do hope they're good. I had such an awful time with the directions. Where's your drink, dear? Oh, I had some milk in the kitchen. Miss Bancroft, when Mr. Parker telephoned... Oh, I'm sure that Miss Bancroft won't mind if you call me Ted. Of course not. I have on numerous occasions. Well, I'd better get to work. I'll uh, leave you two children alone for a while. If you don't think I've found myself, well, I mean, please be honest with me, won't you? Brutally. Isn't she superb? Magnificent. Is this uh, your current painting, Lowe's? Yes. Yes, the models I used are there on the table. I'm titling it The Romance of Two Hyphens. I do hope she likes my work. Oh, she's bound to. Wouldn't it be wonderful if she said I was ready for a public exhibition? Then Father would have to let me stay. Yes, he would, wouldn't he? Oh, she's so attractive. You know, the two of you look so nice together, so mature. Lois, I'm none too fond of this word, mature. I find it a, a grey at the temple's word, a sort of um, bifocal expression, a somewhat pot-bellied phrase. But you're a little grey at the temple's, and I like it. Oh, you do? Yes, I suppose a few premature grey hairs in a man of my age is... Now, there you go, getting hypersensitive about your age. How many times have I told you human relationships are ageless? Well, that's what it says in the book, but I, uh, I keep forgetting. Oh, now you're laughing at me. Tommy Ryan laughed at me once, too. Who's Tommy Ryan? Oh, a stupid adolescent I knew in Texas. Tommy Ryan, what a nice, virile name. He laughed at me once. I haven't spoken to him since. How long have you been painting, Lois? In real earnest? About six months. Well, I must say you're one of the most prolific painters I've ever met. That's what my teacher said. He said I had enough canvas to cover a circus tent. Oh, she paints like one inspired. Oh, I've seen her do a, a six-foot canvas in under two hours. I barely have any wall space left. You have a remarkable flair for titles, too. That, uh, that one you called Octogenarian Kisses, for instance. Octagonal Kisses, Hetty. Oh. I liked Octogenarian, too. Oh, Miss Bancroft, don't spare me. Oh, I won't. I'm a... Uh... She's trying to collect my thoughts. Oh, uh, uh, Lois, uh, uh, might I have another piece of orange? This piece is getting rather wet. Oh, of course. Thank you so much. Well, you do like her work, don't you, Eddie? The girl has achieved the absolute in her painting. The absolute? Really? Absolutely nothing. All she does is doodle in oils. The Texas influence, no doubt. You're not going to tell her that, Eddie, are you? You mustn't. Darling, I'm not going to lie to her, not even for you. Oh, well, don't tell her anything. I mean, she's an amateur painter, a neophyte. Neophyte. From the Greek words neo, meaning new, and fight, meaning fight. So you cannot fight a newcomer. I mean, after all, you can't go around using your position as a critic to, to intimidate and discourage a budding talent. No, I mean, really. No, I mean, I mean, can you? Yes. Her work is atrocious. What did you say, Miss Bancroft? 
Oh, she said that your work is a little bit uh, precocious. That's what she said. Did you? Did you really? Didn't you, Addie? Oh, I'm so thrilled. You think I should keep at it, then? Keep at it? Well, <laughs> you underestimate yourself. Miss Bancroft said that you were ready for an exhibition. An exhibit of my work? Oh, Miss Bancroft. Oh, well, there's more to it than that. Miss Bancroft said that she'd arrange this exhibition in time for your father's arrival here. No, oh, but that's only three days. <laughs> oh, don't worry about that. When Miss Bancroft says there'll be an exhibition, there'll be an exhibition. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Oh, wait till my dad hears this. And that stupid Tom Ryan, they'll eat Texas crow all right. The Texas buzzard in the rough. <laughs> Having outlived my usefulness, if you'll call me a taxi, please. Well, I'll take you home, of course, Addie. You want me to help you with the arrangements, I don't doubt. Oh, Mr. Parker, what would I ever have done without you? Call me Ted, please. Everybody else does. Except me. I'm thinking up new names every minute. <laughs> all right. All right, Ted. <laughs> Now, how long at least did you want? I'll take it for one month. One month? Well, you can have the store back on Monday. You mean you only want this place over the weekend? Say, this is on the level, isn't it? I mean, you're not a con man. It's debatable in this case, but uh, I can give you references. Yeah. Here's your key. Look, I'll wait here. I'm expecting a friend. This deal, I'll believe, when your check clears the bank. Well, this is it. What do you think of it? I'll tell you what I think of it. For the third and final time, I'll have no part of this. I'll not endorse that girl's monstrosities. But all I need is your help in just setting this thing up. And we've got to work fast. We've only got three days. The only reason I'm here is to tell you some bitter truths. Want to hear them? Look. We could hang some of the more noisy ones back there. They're not so bad, they look like Rembrandts. Mm -hmm. Oh, do you think she's got anything big enough to cover that up? Just give her the dimensions, she'll whip something up for you in an hour. Ted, that girl can't paint and she never will. Ted, the critics will rip her to pieces. Well, there'll be no critics. An art exhibit is public property. Not this one. This one will be confined to people I know intimately. You must love that girl an awful lot. Oh, it's more than that now, it's a challenge. Man against the elements. Just stare at them and try and look intelligent. Friday. Look, I have a lot of other calls to make. All right. Goodbye. Thank you. I'm to buy your picture. Now, uh, what was the name of it again? Study of a frightened asterisk. What? Oh, Miss Bancroft will show it to you. I think you better write that down for me. Yeah, I will. Now, don't you forget. I won't forget, don't you? It's car fare there and back and regular pay while I'm looking at them. Fair enough. <clears throat> well, that's that. You won't see those till tomorrow in the gallery. Oh, if only I could have watched them being put up. Oh, no, Miss Bancroft wouldn't hear of it. She says it's bad luck. You just relax. Perhaps you'd like to, um, do a little thinking about us. Or oh, a Bancroft exhibition. And you did it for me. Come in. Dad! Lord Daddy, Charlie. dear! Oh. So, this is where the family genius is being developed. But where are all the pictures? Snapped up at the galleries? Well, it's quite a story, Daddy. I want you to meet Mr. Parker, Ted Parker. Well, hello, Mr. Parker. Lois has written to me about you. Let me have your hat, Daddy. Sit down, won't you? Sit down, Mr. Parker. You seem to have been very kind to her, Mr. Parker. I, uh, I thank you. Well, I'm delighted to meet you, sir. The, the, the kindness has been all on her side, allowing me to sort of hang around. Mr. Parker. Ted. Ted is doing the most marvelous thing for me. He and this friend of his, Adele Bancroft, the famous art authority, have arranged a show for me. My painting's going to exhibit tomorrow. Oh, really? Miss Bancroft's word carries considerable weight. But uh, a public exhibit after only six months' study. Oh, your daughter has a great talent, Mr. Rogers. She must have more than that. Oh, she has indeed. Oh, and think what she'll have after another year in New York. I understand you're a carrot grower, sir. A uh, rancher, Mr. Parker. Uh, Parker's the name. Yes, Parker. 
<laughs> well, in the Southwest, anything over three acres is a ranch. Under three acres is a ranchito. Under one acre is an estate, and under 100 feet is a, oh, a parcel of land. <laughs> Any man is a rancher who has a large hat and a station wagon. And may I violate a Western tradition and ask you a personal question? Uh, you mean you'd like to know what kind of carrots I grow? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, he doesn't do anything, Daddy. Well, I wouldn't say that, Lois. In our part of the country, Mr. Rogers, we have our own terms. And a man who's saddled with looking after his family's properties and investments is known variously as A, a man about town, B, a playboy, C, an eligible bachelor, and D, that irresponsible loafer, Ted Parker. Mm -hmm. And you? Oh, I'm all of them. But due to the fact that I have fortunately been able to double the value of my family's estates, I'm now known as Ted Parker, the lucky loafer. Dad, can I get you some coffee or something? You mean you can make coffee? Oh, <laughs> Daddy, of course I can. <laughs> Well, if uh, you'll excuse me, Lois, and uh, Mr. Rogers, I, I'd better get down to the gallery. And, so I'll, I'll see you later, sir. You certainly will. I wouldn't miss this exhibition for all the impasto in the Louvre. All oh, the impasto? Uh -huh. <laughs> well, isn't that something to do with ravioli and spaghetti and noodles and that type of thing? Oh, that's pasta. Impasto, the thick application of paint to canvas. Well, I didn't mean to be pedantic, but uh, I thought I was talking to a couple of artists. Oh, not Ted, Daddy. He, he says he can't draw a straight line with a ruler. Uh, that's rather a striking phrase. Well, it's not mine, really. I must have heard it somewhere. Well, goodbye. I'll see you in church. Rough estimate, I would call this a triumphant success. Here comes another one. Oh, come along, Lois. Well, here I am, Mr. Parker. You said four o'clock, and that's what it is, right on the dot. That's fine, Mrs. Mack. And this is Miss Rogers, whose pictures you're so anxious to see. Hello. Well, what a pretty girl. I think I'll be going in. I couldn't finish the work at home today, so I just left the kitchen. Oh, that's fine, Mrs. Mack. I I I'll do it on Monday. Good, thank you so much. Uh, Miss Bancroft, would you take care of the cleaning, uh, uh, the customer? Oh, yes, of course. <sighs> Happy? Oh, delirious. I'm so excited I could scratch. Oh, when you have a niche in the Hall of Fame, scratch it, I always say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only that dopey Tom Ryan could see this. Do you know what he said to me once? He'd think twice before he let me paint the kitchen cabinets. Tommy Ryan, a scoffer, huh? See, where's your dad? Oh, he's probably out trying to find new markets for his carrots. Did that wee girl back there make all these pictures? Every one of them. By hand? Not only by hand, but one at a time. Well, where is the one that I'm supposed to be buying? Well, that's down here. Hi, Mr. Parker. Didn't have time to dress, so I came the way I was. Oh, that's all right, uh, I suppose, Bill. Uh, uh, Lois, this is Bill Silversmith. He's uh, told me so often of his interest in contemporary art, and he jumped at the chance to see your work. I hope you won't be disappointed. Not me. I'm crazy about the stuff. <laughs> well, get in there, Bill. Uh, sure thing. Say, by the way, you're due for a loop job this week. Uh, thank you. You know, I never realized how well known you were. Everyone who's come in knows you by name. Oh, it's birds of a feather, you know, art lovers, the aesthetic fraternity. You also have a car in common. Well, Miss Rogers perceives life through terms of mathematical symbols. You don't say. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I better be going before you turn me head. Now, now this painting is based on the cube. To Miss Rogers, the cube is the quintessence of all human endeavor. It uh, sort of exemplifies heaven on earth. You know, I had a wallpaper like this one time, and it gave me a splitting headache. Mm. Bless you, child. You've got a good, strong pair of hands. Thank you very much. I'll be seeing you Monday, Mr. Parker. See you on Monday, Mrs. Mack. Well, Lois, you made your first sale. Yes, I see. Which one was it? Your study of a frightened asterisk. Not yet. Five o'clock and she sold a painting. It's amazing. Ted, isn't that your cleaning woman? Oh, yes, she does come in occasionally and brush a few things. Practically all her money goes on paintings. I warned her about it several times, but she's sort of an addict, kind of Picasso mainliner. The funny thing is... Ted, there was something I wanted to ask you about down here. Would you excuse us, Lois? Would you? Of course.
for the way all your friends are greeting you, you'd think this was your own special clam bake. I know, and I warned them all about it, too. Yeah, you do look beautiful today. Aren't you losing sight of your objective? You uh, do have an objective, you know. Oh, sure, sure. Have you, uh, as the saying goes, popped the question yet? No, but I'm, I'm building to it. Well, now's the time while the first glow of success is there. Yeah, I guess it is. Ted! Eyes of Texas are upon you. King Carrot, the rabbit's delight. Lois tells me she sold one of her pictures. $75. Who bought it for you? <laughs> the woman who cleans out my... What was that again? <laughs> Will you excuse us a minute, Lois? Oh, wait. Uh, call long distance, operator 27. There's a phone in the restaurant next door. All right, Danny. Who is it? Friend of yours from Texas. I just talked to him. He insisted you call him. Tommy Ryan. Tommy? My Tommy! I'm afraid that's how it is, son. And may I reimburse you for the pictures that your... your friends bought? I'm sure you financed the venture. Pretty transparent, wasn't it? But please don't tell Lois about it, because I don't think she knows, and she'd be crushed. Oh, I doubt it very much. But the sentiment does you credit. Lois is very... Isn't that Miss Bancroft? Oh, yes, Addie. Excuse Addie, me. look, the show's off. Everybody's hep except Lois. Where is Lois? Oh, she went next door to telephone to Texas Tommy. And she ran, too. I'm afraid you don't remember me, Miss Bancroft. I'm Sam Rogers. Oh, please forgive me. In the general confusion, I took it for granted you knew each other. Miss Bancroft, this is... That's not necessary, Ted. Sam and I met years ago. I helped him to buy some paintings for a hotel he owns in San Antonio, isn't it, Sam? Abby, you have a memory like a skip tracer. Well, did I do a good job for you? <laughs> I've been offered four times what I paid for those pictures. If I had any conscience, I'd offer you an additional fee. Sam, it's good to see you again. I feel the same way, Abby, but... Tell me, how did a legitimate, ethical dealer get mixed up in this kind of a fresh fry? It was entirely my fault, sir. I practically took charge of the entire... Well, now, Ted, just a minute. I'd like to get the story from her. How about dinner, Addie? Sam, I'd love it. Then you can tell me how you switched from hotel magnet to carrot rancher. Oh, look, why don't we all three go? Lois, two of... Ted, my boy, you lead your love life and let us lead ours. Addie, you name the place and I'll buy it for you for tonight. I trust you remember we dance well together? Oh, I remember it very well. Addie, I don't want to be old-fashioned, and I'm sure you've forgotten, but you had a dinner engagement with me tonight. I don't remember. Oh, Ted, forgive me. How stupid of me to have forgotten. Of course we had a date. Sam, I'm sorry. How long are you going to be in town? I'm flying home tomorrow, Addie. With Lois, I'm rather certain. I hope you'll both come down and visit us sometime. Oh, we'd just love to. <laughs> yes, indeed. Oh, any father of Lois is, is, is a friend of ours. Very, very talented girls are great potentialities. She had friends, too. Misguided ones, but I think they meant well. Goodbye, Addie. Good luck, Ted. Goodbye, Sam. Bye. I'm an idiot. Being a critic, I'll have to agree. No, I had a horrible moment just now, and I thought that you and Rogers would... Well, when I suddenly realize what I must have known all these years. Sure, I'm not just number seven. What do you mean, number seven? The ballerina, the tennis player, the beauty queen. Oh, you're all of those and millions more. Oh, Addie, please forgive me. Forgive me for being a, a first-class, fur-lined, ocean-going... Idiot! I've always loved you, you know. I know it. is it? Pet shop would be more like it.